To start, let's just go around the room and share one thing that you have enjoyed about your week so far. So we're doing this in all of our classes, right? So kids are going from one class to the next, knowing what a circle looks like, knowing the expectations time, you know? of it. When situations do occur where students get in an argument, then for them to be able to have a moment to sit down and hear each other, I think that that helps us make sure that that situation isn't going to happen again, right? We're hearing each other's feelings um, rather than just saying, oh, you got in a fight, let's suspend you and walk away. Come back the next day, two days later and act like it never happened. Now we're going to repair the harm that was done. Really giving those students a voice, um, helping to for those students to have more buy-in with the teacher has been great. Uh, when I started in the intervention room, sometimes my room would be 20, 30 students. And so I was thinking, how can we go from these students coming here and being sent out for the same reasons to, to building that relationship and keeping them in the classroom where the learning takes place. And that's what Restorative does. It brings that community together. It's helped me build a relationship with some of my teachers that, you know, we haven't really got along with. And then um, the school, you know, just helps you know, people understand other students better and become friends. And I also want to know your perspective, your point of view. I use it to talk about rights and responsibilities with my students and they develop their own responsibilities um, and rights for the classroom, both for me as a teacher and for students and I think that was a really empowering experience. Trust is big because uh, you can trust your classmates and like, your, uh, like when you need somebody to talk to, you can trust your uh, staff around the building to like help you out. This year I've noticed a huge difference as far as students being more open. Um, being understanding, but also reaching out for outlets on how to um, really give them solutions and, and problem solve and really seeking out for that advice. It's a great change in the culture. When you walk up and down the hallways, you see students in class. As you walk up and down the hallways, students are being more respectful towards each other. But it also lets the teachers know that we're coming up with a system to tell them we're going to interrupt what they've seen before and letting them know that we are giving them a tool to work with and we're also letting the students, we're giving them a tool to work with. Um, restorative practice is just a way of being. It's a way to help um, when harm is done to students. It's just a more proactive approach instead of blaming students. It's trying to figure out the root of the problem and it's, it's built around relationships. There's both prevention and the prevention happens in um, uh, restorative circles. Everyone has to listen while the one person is talking. So it's really good practice for understanding one another and building empathy. I have definitely seen improvements. Our, our school climate has gotten better since last year. The point from our group is from solving problems, everything that you say stays there and nobody's gonna uh, tell anyone, anybody else about what you said. The circle is making our class come together instead of breaking apart. It, I, I think with the results that we're getting right now, I think the school is going to want to push it a little more, and it's gonna, I think it's going to grow. This is so important because we all deserve to be heard, right? We all want to be validated. These are basic human needs. It's a way of being, it's a way of learning, it's a way of living, but not just in school, but in life, truly in life. I am just so incredibly proud of the fact that St. Paul Public Schools started this pilot program because it it's already working. It's already working and we can see the impact. So think about things that you want from good friends. It makes me think about other people so I can be um, have better relationships with other people. And now I want you to sort of turn the question upside down and think about what makes you a good friend. It helps me sometimes because it helps you make more friends and um, learn about other people. Ultimately for us, restorative practices is helping kids who have made choices that don't fit with the community values it helps them to restore those relationships, but first we need to do the groundwork of building the relationships. So we need them to understand their place in the community, how that touches other people, getting into the rituals of doing a circle where every voice is heard, every voice is shared, so that they understand that they're part of a larger community. And then when things go awry, they have a tool that they can share where they were coming from when they made those mistakes. 
In building trust with kids, it's, it's listening to them and it is letting them know that you've heard what they've said. Th that seems very simple, but that's, that's really the, the foundation of what we're doing, is that we are intentionally listening to kids. Listening to kids. In the mornings when I don't have a circle, I don't feel quite like the day is ready to go. Um, or if we've had a long weekend, it's a grounding ac activity. And it's just a reminder of, um, of the things that are wonderful about um, being in, in a diverse urban, urban place. And, and a reminder that there are things that connect us all.